The first gig I ever saw, the first Motorhead show I ever went to, was at Long Beach Arena, and uh, Lemmy was opening up for Ozzy. I saw them open for Ozzy on uh, Blizzard of Oz, on Ozzy's first tour. They opened for Ozzy at the Palladium in New York City. This is like 81. It was the original lineup with Filthy and, and Eddie Clark, and, and it was the loud, one of the loudest shows I think I'd ever been to. Most people at the Palladium that night, it was like a 3,000-seater, they had no idea. I, they were just, it was like that, what's that commercial with the guy sitting in the chair with it getting blown back? It, the, most people kind of had this stunned look on their faces after Motorhead was finished and just like, where's Ozzy? Still to this day, it's very memorable as being one of the loudest shows I've ever seen. And, and, and uh, it was really noisy. It was just like loud and static. Now, it just might, you know, I've seen him a bunch of times. I've never heard him sound exactly like that. But that, that fucking uh, made a huge impression on me because it was just so almost violent. Two, one, two, one, two. I won't go on stage while they're playing because it's too loud for me. It's just incredibly high level, incredible amounts of high mid, and it makes your eardrums rattle. Yeah, on the odd occasion I have been up there, it feels as if my eardrums are vibrating. I know that that's how they work, but like over vibrating. Love the vibrato. <laughs> Today for Sounds all right. I've done a few gigs with, with Motorhead and gone to sound check with him. It's so fucking loud. You really can't do much. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of yelling going on. <laughs> One, two. That's perfect. Just a bit more. I'd say the Motorhead on stage sound is like three blind men fighting. You know what I mean? Like, you start off with a sound check level, then somebody wants something louder. And then because that's louder, it's affected someone else's sound, and that gets louder. And then, then it has a knock-on effect to somebody else's sound, so their stuff gets louder, and then you go back to the first guy again, and then their stuff gets louder, and it just goes round and round and round until it's just a huge fucking noise. If you've got a new guy up on the stage there, I'd, you'd probably be deaf in a month or two, but you do get used to it. My wife wants me to wear a urinate. She wants to get me a urinate for me at Christmas, because she said she's fed up of repeating herself. And I can't even hear the stacks. You know, full blast, and I can't even hear them right next to them. How bad is that? It's very, very loud. Then it's insanely loud, and then there is hospital loud. You know, and I'd say we're borderline right now from insanely loud to hospital loud. <laughs> Have you just turned up, Phil? You've turned up, yeah. Roger, did you turn him up? Yes, now. Turn him down. An ear doctor would probably be amazed at just how well Lemmy can hear, considering the uh, abuse he gives his ears. There's one thing about Lemmy, he'll always hear you if you offer him a drink, even if you walk up behind him. Eight monitor guys one time in 11 days. And there's one guy I remember turned up, it was so funny. I think he was number six. 
And this guy came, we were, we were just about to start sound check, and this guy turned up straight off the train. He, he came into the gig like this. Uh, we had this little case, briefcase. Uh, I think Hobbs introduced him to Lemmy. He shook his hand. He said, now, Lemmy, yes, I've heard about the problems with the 74.9 decibels and all that, blah, 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 blah. blah. And Lemmy said, he's fired. And the guy just went, oh, I went back to this part on the train. It's too technical, like, it wouldn't work with us. That was funny as shit. <laughs> There was one time on a Nazi tour, he was <laughs> just screaming at this poor monitor guy. Uh, this guy named Gunk, Gunk Selg was his name. Uh, he was one of Willie Nelson's old sound guys, and he worked for Ozzy, and he did Motorhead too, who was the opening act at this point. And uh, he's just screaming at this guy. He's all, do you hear the shit coming out of this, the, 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 the monitors here? Do you hear that shit? And Gunk said, no, I, I don't. And he looks him right in the eye and says, well, that's me, turn it up. Everything louder than everything else was first coined by our long-term but now retired monitor engineer known as Eagle. And it was basically a description of what it's like doing Motorhead's monitors. Because nobody asked for anything to be turned down. It's turn this up, turn that up, turn something else up, so everything louder than everything else. <laughs> No, we were in the rehearsal room. I remember, I remember that well. It's about probably the same size as this, and uh, and then and this, the same sort of week, Jimmy Page was rehearsing there, and Jimmy came into the same room, and it was it was tiny like this. He happened to come in, and we we would we would rehearse in the set all the way through without stopping. And poor Jimmy came in about three songs before the end, and he was back up against the wall like that. We couldn't dare say anything. He couldn't. He never tried to talk to somebody. He was, Poor bastard, he was there for three songs, <laughs> taking a paste in. We're the loudest band in the world, in the Guinness Book of Records. You know, that's what people want. They want it loud. They want it loud, they want it fast, they want it... Lemmy. Is it loud enough? No! Is it loud enough? Yeah! Are you sure about it? This is Shereen Turner. It's called Killers. Yeah! 